Since the 70s, professional photographer Russ Keller has had a unique relationship with Yellowstone. I pretty much get up every morning, go out into the park. For 30 years, that's meant a sharpened focus on one animal. The word pack really just means extended family. You have mom and dad and the kids and the grandkids and the sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles. They're very much like us. An unavoidable link for Diane Thompson. I raised two boys and we were very active in the Boy Scouts. So that took us outdoors a lot. Time after time, it comes back to lessons that I can apply to myself. From 1926 until 1995, wolves were non-existent in Yellowstone having a devastating impact on the region's natural biodiversity. That is the wolf chart. We sell as many as 4,000 of those a year. This is every chart right here. Diane and her husband, Jim Halfpenny, the president of the Naturalist World of Ecological Education, have been along for the journey of reintroduction of wolves from its very start, educating the public and policymakers. There were threats against all the biologists, managers, and wolves. We had armed guards 24 hours a day at all the pens. At the time, the politics involved almost got that class shut down. Reintroduction was met with resistance, but experts say that's just a matter of anthropology and the development of the European farm. Once we started farming, the relationship with wolves changed, changed very much. I mean, prior to that time, we honored the wolf and we thought we thought of them as our brothers. People moved to towns, the wilderness became bad and over there, and God's dog was in town. That was the domestic dog, and the wolf was part of the wilderness, the devil's dog. This lack of wild in the wilderness is now an issue resurfacing about 500 miles south of Yellowstone. The Colorado folks are going through everything we did in the 90s with laws and resentment and roadblocks, and I got the last grizzly bear. I documented the last wolverine. I documented the last lynx. They're gone. Colorado's no longer wild. Though it can be easy to close our eyes and hope the world heals on its own, the burden of understanding makes this our issue, one we thankfully have successful experience mending. It's our job to take care of planet Earth. Nobody else is going to do it. Marcus Kakova, MTN News.